Paschimottanasana, the West Stretching Pose, otherwise known as the Seated Forward Bend, the name Paschimo is significant for practice done traditionally facing the rising sun. Paschimottanasana signifies the sunset of the practice, moving more into a deep inner space, calming and quieting more inside in preparation for ultimately for Savasana. Here we start with the foundation of Dandasana as with all seated forward bends. If a student has difficulty sitting up tall with a neutral pelvis, as in Dandasana, encourage the use of a prop underneath their sitting bones. I'm going to ask Noemi to slide her hands slightly forward along her legs in the clasp without losing the length of her spine to pull and lengthen her through her spine. Students who are unable to clasp their feet without rounding the spine should encourage to use a strap and to hold the strap with their arms straight while sitting tall and then to create a dynamic tension between the pull on the strap and the flexing of the feet to help encourage the drawing of the pinky toe sides of the feet back and the pressing of the balls of the feet forward, keeping the heels grounded, the legs active, and the inner thighs spiraling down. I'll step behind Noemi to accentuate the grounding of her sitting bones. Sitting behind her, I place my hands firmly on the tops of her hips. Grounding down, I'm going to ask Noemi to release the strap because I know that she doesn't need the strap and put it to the side. And then with her hands again by her sides, rooting down, inhaling, lifting up. With the exhalation, I'll encourage her to smooth her, her torso forward and fold forward and down as far as she comfortably can. And then with the inhalation, to round slowly all the way back up with the chin at the chest, come up as high as it takes to get the most length to her spine and expansion across the chest, and then to move slowly back forward and down. And inhaling, as she comes back up, I root down through her hips to help create more ease through her lower back. She comes up, opens across the heart center, and slowly moves back forward and down. Encourage your students to stay with this undulating movement as long as they like, little by little, moving farther and further forward. And staying with the breath, we'll do this one more time, inhaling, lifting and expanding, and then slowly releasing out and down. This time, Noemi will stay there with her hands on the floor by the sides of her feet. And here, I'll place my hands again to the hips, and the primary action here is to press down and slightly back to help ground the sitting bones and to create more length in the lower back. I want to encourage your students to keep their feet flexed in dorsiflexion. Doing that will also intensify the stretch in the hamstrings muscles, in which case a student can point the feet somewhat farther forward, but be aware that that compromises the engagement of the quadriceps muscles and makes it a little bit more intense on the hamstrings. Here I'm going to again place my hands onto Noemi's hips and pressing down with my thumbs pressing the sacrum down, my own shoulder blade shrugging down my back, my chest expanding, I'll find that point in the curve of her spine where the arc starts to peak and place my sternum just there. And with each inhale, is this okay? With each inhale, as I feel her breath, I'll lift off a little bit. As I feel her exhaling, I'll encourage the lengthening of her spine by sliding my sternum slightly up her back. All the while, I'm using my hands to ground her hips and encourage that firm rooting. Little by little, she draws farther and farther forward. I'm going to ask you to lift your head a bit, lift your chest, and lengthen that a bit more. And again, now with my hands on the shoulders, I'll rotate the shoulders to draw the shoulder blades more down the back and encourage more length and expansion across the heart center. Shoulder blades down the back, and eventually, I draw my hands to the feet, draw those pinky toe sides of the feet back, and keep breathing with your student coordinating your breath with hers. If the student clasps the wrist, as you can see Noemi has done here, slide the clasp up to the balls of the feet and use that, just as we do with the strap, in a dy dynamic positioning, pulling on the hands and pressing out on the feet, keeping the legs active. When a student starts to rise from Paschimottanasana, it's helpful to place further pressure down on the hips. And then with the inhalation, I'll ask her to slowly draw back up with my hand drawing down her back to encourage the release of her shoulder blades down her back. Spaciousness across the heart center. Returning to Dandasana, a staff post.